Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time zone that you're in. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I choose to rejoice and to be glad. Well, I'm glad you're with me today. I pray God's blessing upon you and upon your family and your house. I pray that the Spirit of the Lord is moving, ministering to you this day in Jesus' name. I thank you for the life of the Holy Spirit of God that lives inside of us, dwells inside of us, springs up inside of us. What a beautiful gift that was given to us, the gift of salvation, and then the gift of the Holy Spirit that comes inside of us, dwells with us, and truly we can say the scripture is correct. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So when you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, God the Father is there, Jesus is there, the Holy Spirit is there, moving and ministering in your life. Hello, Blanca. And so we praise God that he is with us today and he's watching over us in the name of the Lord. Lord. want to pray for America today. want to pray for the presidents, the vice president and the president of this country. We want to pray for mayors and governors all across this land that God would speak to them and that we would see revival in the different in all the states here in the United States. We pray for our uh, neighbors to the south, beautiful Mexico that God will keep his hand upon the Mexican people and our neighbors to the north, Canada, that God would bless Canada and that God would bless Mexico and Canada and the United States of America and bring us together as friends and not enemies. Amen. So let's continue to pray for that in Jesus' wonderful name. God bless you, Garcia. And uh, we just pray the Lord. Now, this is the place that I like to go to, part two. Part two, the place that I love to go to. And the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourself. That assembly can be in a church. That assembly can be in a church house. Um, let me just review that I believe there are three people, uh, three groups of people uh, after this virus is done. Uh, that we're going to see. One, some people are never going to go back to church again. Boom, period. They're done. Number two, some people are going to change churches because they were not taught warfare. They were not taught the word of God. It was a fluffy, fluffy uh, service where they're, you know, 45 minutes in, 45 minutes out. And, um, uh, but those people are going to change churches, going to find a church, a pastor that will preach the word of the Lord and uh, bring some uh, great teaching uh, from the Bible. And the third group is going to be a church on fire, a church on fire. So I believe that the church has been sleeping, but it is now arising uh, out of that slumber and uh, uh, no longer shall that be in Jesus' name. So my second, the, the place I love to go to more than any other place is the house of God because it has been a blessing to my life. So many people say, well, if I miss church, I don't want anybody hounding me. I don't want anybody getting after me. Well, I'll, when I was pastoring, and not to say that I was the greatest pastor in the world, because that's not true, but I was a pastor. And if you went to my church, then I have to give account for your life. That if I don't preach the gospel and I don't bring correction into your life, then your blood is on my hands. Yes. Your blood is on my hands. And so when people would come to my church and they called it, this is my church, you're my pastor. I said, okay. So here's the deal. If you miss, I'm going to send you a postcard and say, I missed you last Sunday. If you miss two Sundays in a row and you don't contact me, you say, I was out of town, went to an anniversary, I was sick, whatever. So if there's no phone call, you're going to get a postcard. And then the second time you miss, you're going to get a phone call. And I'm going to call you up and say, hey, this is Pastor Hofer. Uh, I've been missing you around here. Is there anything we can do for you? 
And number three, a third week, you don't come. Then there's a knock on the door. And I say, hey, what's happening? And I can tell when I'm knocking on the door if you're happy to see me or not. And uh, you say, well, that's harassment. No. If you say that I'm your pastor, then I am responsible for your life and your blood will be on my hands. So this is the way I feel that it is. And if you don't like that, then maybe then you're in the wrong church. Okay, but I'm not going to I'm not going to have the Lord spank me account of you because you don't like to be followed up on. And so that the church. Now, here we go. Then. So that's accountability, accountability in Psalms 96 verse eight. Now, that's not being mean. That's not being tough. That just means I care about you. I love you. I, I want to know if there's something wrong. What can I do to fix something that uh, needs to be fixed? Okay? So, you know, if your pastor doesn't call you when you're gone, maybe he's happy you're gone. I hope not. Okay? The free of charge. I could get in big trouble about that. Psalms 96 verse 8, it says, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name and bring an offering and come into his courts. Now, when I, I, when I was working a job and I was attending a church, uh, this church had five services, five services on Sunday. Are you listening? I would pay my tithe, then I would take a $5 bill and I would break it, okay? And at every service, I gave an offering. It was a dollar, okay? But I already paid my tithe, and so the dollar deal was an offering. You say, well, that's not very much. That's true. It wasn't very much, but that's what I had. And I gave it as unto the Lord. What I'm trying to tell you is every time we go to God's house, we should go there with an offering. Now, I want to tell you a pet peeve of mine. If you don't know what pet peeve means, I'll put it in another way. Something that really ticks me off. If you don't quite understand that, something that really aggravates me is when people, oofa, when people will, it's time for the offering, the music is playing, la da 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 and people are going up there and they are putting money into the basket. And then there's these people that fake it. They make it look like they're putting something in there, but they're not putting nothing into the offering. I would never do that. I would never pretend I put something in the offering. You're lying in the house of God. I would rather turn to my neighbor and say, hey, give me a buck. You know, I don't have no money to give in the offering. Give me a quarter. But I'm not going to go up there and make it look like I got something. And what I don't now, you can disagree with me all you want, but you're wrong and I'm right. Okay. And so that's to me, that's, dis, that's disrespecting. So every time you come to God's house, you need to come with an offering as unto the Lord. That's what the Bible says. You know, some people get mad at the preacher when the preacher tells them to do something and he's coding it right out of the manual. You know, and they get mad at the preacher. How dare you? No, 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 no. Don't get mad at me. Get mad at God and see how that works, okay? And so when I come to the house of God, I come with an offering. Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey them that have rule over you, okay? And submit yourself, for they watch for your souls as they must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. That was found in Hebrews 13, 17. So if you are attending church, then you're saying to the leadership, to the pastor, I give, I submit myself to the teaching, to the word of God, and to you. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't want to do. They don't like to submit to authority. We're seeing this now. I mean, <laughs> destroying police cars, destroying uh, businesses. I can't watch these clips. 
because I'm not going to lie to you. This really upsets me. And I don't understand everything that's going on and why it's being allowed. But uh, ooh, that's, that's, that's not good, okay? And, uh, but here we go. So, and so it's, it's, it, in, in America, for sure, amongst us white people, it is hard. They don't like to be told what to do, you know? You know nobody's going to tell me what to do. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, as long as you live, somebody's going to tell you what to do. If you go 75 miles an hour in a 40 mile hour speed limit, somebody's going to tell you not to do that. So we always have to have a submissive heart. Now, here's the deal. You tell me, oh, I just listen to God, hallelujah. What God says, I listen to him, hallelujah. And you cannot even obey the man or the woman that you see. It's pretty hard for me to believe that you obey God when who you have not seen, okay? You have not seen. And then you try to tell me that I obey God when you can't obey your pastor or the police officer or your boss or your teacher, and you're trying to tell me that you obey God. I'm sorry. You know, I'm an old dog. I've been around the block a couple of times, and I would have to just tell you flat out, you're a liar. Because you, you cannot tell me that you obey God and you cannot obey the word of God and your pastor. This is why we're having problems in the church and in this nation. Uh, I'm going to do a little series about how to respect elders, you know, and that's for another deal. Of course, I have white hair and I'm an elder and I can preach it. Okay, here we go. Now, then, what are some of the various ways in which you can worship the Lord when we attend his house? The Bible says in Psalms 47, 1, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Yes, we give standing ovations for for other people, we clap for other people. We even clap when a guy takes a ball, puts it in a hoop, yay, score! Or a guy takes a pig skin and throws it in the air, and another guy makes a touchdown, and we, whoa, yay! But then we ask you to worship the Lord, and one of the forms of worship is, I worship you, glory to God. We need to give the Lord a standing ovation. Whoa! Glory to God. And you know what's really crazy is this. Some people, you know, I'm, I'm a worshiper. I'm loud. And I say, worship the Lord. Praise his holy name. And I've had people come up to me and say, you know, I just can't do that. You know, I just can't. You know, I'm not an emotional person. Oh, okay. Then I go to a basketball game with them and they're screaming and yelling. You know, when somebody makes a point, you know, and they're just, you know, or what really upsets me is when people, you know, will go to a rock concert and they're going, you know, I don't know what this means. I hope it's nothing bad. But anyway, they're up there like this, you know, and stuff, you know, and I'm saying, what? I don't get it. It's, it's rebellion. Okay. Come on. So clappy hands, all the people. Then in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verse 8, I will therefore that men everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. There was a non-Pentecostal that went to a Pentecostal church. And of course, the Pentecostal people were doing like this. So he began to wave at him because he thought they were waving at him. It's a joke. It's a funny joke. Okay. And so... <laughs> We, we, we lift up our holy hands to the Lord. It's, it's a sign of surrender, hands up. And we, but it's not, we don't lift our hands up because somebody has a gun in our back. We're lifting our hands because we love you. And it is a sign of surrender. And we worship the Lord. It's hard for me not to lift my hands in the air and praise God. It's hard for me not to do that because I love to do it so much. Hallelujah. So, in Psalms 134, verse 2, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. And bless the Lord. You see, we don't go to church for people. We don't go to church. Some people will say, oh, that was such a beautiful a praise and worship today. I have a news, a news outlet for you. The praise and worship was not for you. We don't care if you enjoy it or don't. The worship was not for you. I know what you're saying, but I want to put a different twist to it. The worship was for him, not for you. Yes, yes, hallelujah. 
Will somebody run the aisles? Glory to God. And, <laughs> and then Psalms 150, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. You got breath? Hello? Then praise him. Praise him. Praise him. That's one thing about black folks. Glory to God. They can get down that's why, I, that's why I love having black people in our churches, having Hispanic people in our churches, having white people in our churches. And what we need to do is put the white people in the middle of the, the black folks over here and the Hispanic people over here. And maybe we can, you know, get something going in the white community to lift their hands and just jive for Jesus and worship. I would rather be accused of being a radical worshiper by you than to be accused by God that I'm not a worshiper. Hallelujah. So we need to worship the Lord and praise his holy name. Now, if I go to a, a non-Pentecostal church, I'm not going to lift my hands and go, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to respect the house. That's, they don't do that there, you know? And so I'm going to respect the house. But when I come to a Pentecostal church, yo, hallelujah, we're getting down today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For the last year in my meetings, I would say to the people, and many of you are there, you remember, I would say to you on the count of three, we're going to give a shout to the Lord. And I said, I don't want you to act like a pussycat. I want you to be like a lion because we're going to release the roar of the lion of Judah. And we need to roar, hallelujah. Ho, oh, because they're, the, the, you're seen on the news, the demons are roaring at the church and they're defying all the things that we believe in. They're screaming and they're yelling. It's time for the church to release the roar of the Lion of Judah. It's not the time to be silent, friend. It's the time to be a worshiper and to let the roar of the Lion of Judah come forth in Jesus' wonderful name. Then in Psalms, look at this. Here I've been talking about praise the Lord, give a shout, praise the Lord. And now we come to Psalms 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. There's been times in a meeting, in a church meeting, and also in my personal devotions, the power of God was so strong, so strong. The stillness was like a roar. You understand what I'm saying? It was so powerful that the stillness was like a roar. And the Bible tells us to stand still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. That it gets so thick in a meeting that the presence of God is so powerful. Hallelujah. And in those times, as a new Christian, I was delivered. I was set free. One time in a service at TBI, which was the Bible college that I went to in Jamestown, North Dakota. I came from the Mennonite church. They prayed for me in a meeting there in chapel, and I fell out underneath the power of God. And before that, my eyes were so so mean, so, so, so piercing mean. And I had a vision when I was on my back. Glory to God. I had, I didn't know you could have visions or dreams. I wasn't brought up that way, but here I was on my back and I had this dream that, well, I would call it a vision because I was awake and I had this vision and I saw the cross and the word love just going in and out and I was baptized in love that day and I got up and the people at the school looked at me and said, your eyes are not mean like they used to be. Shalom, Agura, Messiah. And this is what this generation needs. This generation needs an experience of the Holy Ghost. And how that's going to happen is when we, as the old dogs, create an atmosphere of worship and praise. And so that when the new people come to church and they watch us people that have been there and we're praising God and worshiping the Lord, they're looking at us and saying, well, I guess that's what they do here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I'm just... 
gonna watch what the old guy's doing over there. All right, he's lifting his hands. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, and so, but if we sit there like a bunch of uh, a bump on a log, and duh, that's that's what the rest of the people are gonna do. They're gonna just sit there. Duh. I guess that's what this church does. So you and I can be forerunners. I had a good breakfast this morning. Glory to God. All right, be still and know that I'm God. So how many times did David say he praised the Lord? He praised the Lord seven times a day. Glory to God. Which means to me it's a lifestyle. Worshiping the Lord is a lifestyle. We don't come to church and turn it off. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then when church service is over, and then, then we go, go back to church, you know, uh, three days later, time to worship the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. No, no. Worship and praise is a lifestyle. I remember a man by the name of Lloyd Weed. He's in heaven now. This guy can memorize the scripture. He is a wonderful pastor. But Lloyd Weed, you know... When I, I told my wife, because she introduced me to the Weed family, and, and uh, I said, your, your, your friends are weird. You know, your friends are weird. They're a little different, you know. And she said, well, you know, you know, I didn't understand. I didn't understand. And, uh, and Brother Lloyd Weed would always go around, you know, praise ye the Lord, you know, and he was just praising God and thank you, Jesus, and all the time like that. And I'm thinking, this guy can't be right, you know. I mean, he can't go around all day long praising the Lord. This guy's a phony, you know what I mean? There's something ain't right with him. And I just didn't understand, you know. But one day I was working with him in Rapid City, South Dakota, and he owned an apartment. And in the basement, he had one of his hired men that was working, and he hit the uh, uh, the pipe, and when he hit the pipe, the water, thank God it wasn't sewer, it was water, and it began to gush all over the place on a brand new rug. So I get there in the in the corner, and I'm watching this whole thing, and it's just like the devil, you know. I said, well, I wonder what the man of God is going to do now. You know, I say, praise the Lord. <laughs> and immediately, out of that man's mouth, said, praise the Lord, hallelujah, shut the water off. That man gave me the best sermon on worship that I ever heard in my entire life because he lived worship. He lived praising God, even when negative things happened. And he shut the water off. He didn't get mad at the worker. And we fixed it and we went on. Oh, hallelujah. So David said, praising God seven times. Then he says in Psalms 34, one, continually, continually worship the Lord. I, this is the best way I can explain it as a farm boy. Worship, being a worshiper is like a cat that's purring. We have two cats and they'll come lay down in and on my lap and they'll go, they're purring. You know, I don't know why they do that. They just do it, purring. And that's the way I see us. There's within my heart a melody. Continually we worship and praise the Lord. In a relationship to God, that's what David was known for. He was a man after God's own heart. Glory to God. So here's a little review. Psalms 47.1, clapping our hands. 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verse 8, lifting our hands to the Lord. Psalms 134.2, bless the Lord. How do you bless the Lord? Well, I, I bless you, Lord. Uh, I thank you for who you are. I, I love you, and I just worship you, and I, I just bless you, Lord. Lord, where I used to curse his name, now I'm blessing his name. Oh, bless the Lord. Praise the Lord in Psalms 150, verse 1. Shout for joy in Psalms 132, 16. Some people say, like I said before, I'm not emotional. Well, let me, let me take an a, a, a electric cane and, bzzz, and I'll get some emotion out of you. You're lying. Don't tell me you're not emotional. That's a, that, that's, that really upsets me. If you can shout at a basketball game, at a sporting event, which is okay. It's okay. It's fun to do that. Okay, but if you say you can't do that in church, then there's something wrong with you. I'm sorry. Don't give me that baloney. Shout for joy. Shout for joy in Psalms 132 verse 16. So I'm telling you, when I come to God's house, I'm excited to come. 
And then it says in Psalms 133, 1. Psalms 133, 1. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I love God's house and I love God's people. God's people have blessed my life. I, I, I have brothers and sisters all across this from California to New York, from uh, Florida, all the way up to Canada and, and to the North Dakota border. I have people in Mexico. I have people in every Central American country. I have people in South America. I have been blessed of God to be a part of the body of Christ. And nothing is more precious when all of us come together and we get radical for Jesus and we worship him. Not only in the church, not only in a gathering, but in our homes. There's within my heart a melody. Oh, I'm telling you, I cannot encourage you enough to be a worshiper. I cannot encourage you enough when you come to God's house. Wouldn't it be cool the moment you walk into the house of God? Hallelujah, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me, I will bless his holy name. It will change the dimension of your life in God, in Jesus' name. So when we're in the house of God, we need to worship the Lord and we need to bring an offering. We need to bring an offering. And you know, when you talk about money, people get all bent out of shape. You know, that's all the preacher wants is our money. And there are some guys like that. I'm sorry to have to tell you that. But you're going to find the one that's not that way. I don't believe your pastor's that way. I believe he's a man of God, a man of ethics, okay? And so we bring an offering as on to the Lord. And uh, God wants to bless us, to bless our finances and to take care of us and to help us pay our bills and to pay our rent and have money set aside and, and have this and have that because he loves us. He loves us and he cares about us. So I want to do what's right. What the right thing to do is when the, um, the pastor said, let's, oh, I, uh, last illustration. I remember one time, you know, I said, all right, everybody, lift your hands and praise the Lord. You know, and I had a man come up to me after the service and he got mad at me. He said, you don't tell me to lift my hands to the Lord. And I said, well, I'm going to because you don't. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to. And I told you to. And I'm the pastor of the church, hello, and I'm following the instructions of the word of God. And I said, the reason I tell you to lift your hands on the air is because you're not doing it. Oh, oh, you know. I love church people, but church people can be whacked out weird sometimes. You know what I mean? I don't get it. Why argue? If it's in the book, do it. Just do what God says. Obey him. Trust him. In the name of the Lord. Oh, I'm so excited about church. So excited about us all get to gather again. And this nonsense will stop. I can't wait. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, we won't be skipping church anymore like you used to. Because you say, God, the devil's trying to take this away from us. This is what I believe. It's not a Democrat, Republican, a battle. It's not even about the virus. It's about the enemy trying to take away the Constitution of the United States of America away from you. And I'm telling you, we need to wake up, get with it, and we're in a spiritual war, and we're going to win in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for praying for us. I pray for this man every day. I don't like him. That's what you said. Well, if you're in the United States, the Bible tells you to pray for the leaders, okay? Okay, try, listen to this. So you don't like our president, okay? Or you don't like this guy. You know, the Bible says this. You know, if you're mad at somebody, the Bible says, bless those that curse you, do good unto them that despitefully use you. I've had some people that, that cursed me. I've had people that despite, despitefully used me, and I pray for them. I do. I have some of them on this list right here who have not been nice to me, 
and I put them on that list and I choose to do what the Bible says and that's pray for my enemies. So even if you don't like this president, you got to pray for him. All right? I pray for him. I pray that God will give him wisdom. Is he a perfect man? Uh Uh-uh. He is like you. That's right. But we pray. I pray for the president of Mexico. Never met the guy. Don't even know his name. You can help me. I pray for the president of Canada. Never met him, but I pray for him. Okay? Now, you know, we, we, come on, church. Let's do what we're supposed to do. All right? But here's the deal. It's not the Democrats, Republicans. It's not the virus. It is uh, the, the, what we call the deep state. It's what we call uh, the, the, the communism, socialism wants to take away this great country. Look what happened to Venezuela. I mean, at one time, Venezuela was one of the strongest nations in South America. And because of socialism, look what happened. So we need to pray for our country in the name of Jesus. So thank you for praying for me. Ramon and I pray for the people who listen to me daily, who give finances towards this ministry. And if you haven't supported us yet, I want to encourage you to do so. I've got some people give me $5 a month. Some people give more than that. But whatever gift that's given to us, we pray for them. If a man gives me $5, we pray for the man that gave me $1,000 as much as we do for the $5 person. And we respect both of them. Nobody gets any more special treatment. The guy that gives $1,000 is not going to get a more special treatment than the $5 man. Okay? So I want you to consider giving towards this ministry in a monthly uh, way. That would be awesome. Or if you just do it one time, God bless you. Okay, tomorrow we're going to dig into this even deeper. We love you guys. Thank you for being part of our ministry. Bye-bye.